Good morning, Ian. It's a pleasure to speak with you today and get an update on Outcrop Silver and Gold. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. So last year I visited Colombia and I went to Falan, which is where um, Santa Ana Project is located, your, your flagship for Outcrop. And it was a wonderful trip. I love the area. People extremely friendly. I got to see your core shack. I got to see the drill rig. Um, I got to see some areas where you're doing some prospecting work that I think now have been actually worked up to being drill ready targets. Can you tell us about the company's progress over the last year since that uh, you know visit I made? Yeah, absolutely. 2023 was um, definitely a a critical uh, time in Outcrop's uh, future. The big one uh, being that we put out our first uh, resource estimate, and really putting out a resource estimate is in this case was was a blessing and 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 a curse, and I'll explain why. Um, the it came we came up with 37 million ounces. And what was really nice was the ability to prove that this is one of the highest grade silver projects in the world, right? On a silver equivalent basis, it's over, the indicated was about 614 grams per ton, but the silver alone was 446 grams per ton. And that is probably one of the highest grade projects uh, in the world. Uh, and it's a true primary silver. We're 73% of the silver um, is, 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 is the resource, right? The value of the resource. So true primary silver. Um, the reason I call it a, a blessing is because, um, Outcrop had been putting out some really amazing drill hole results, but you know, the, it was really required to demonstrate how it holds together. So doing a resource was critically important to be able to say some of the things I just said, and that the resource holds together, um, a, you know, on a, on a, a reasonably uh, feasible economic uh, level, right? And so that was important. But it was a curse because it's really only a very small part of the project. Um, and uh, so many times when people out, put out a resource estimate, there's an expectation, that's it. There's no more coming. It might get 20% bigger or whatever. But in the case of Outcrop, it's a truly different story. Um, and so that's been a big part of our job. The other big one, um, was our metallurgical test work, which showed an incredible recovery from 93% recovery from flotation alone. And I can probably dive into why that's so important probably later. And then the rest is we developed an additional 11, took 11 targets and they're now uh, drill ready. So when I say we have lots of targets on the project, but to be drill ready for us is it's been mapped at surface uh, and we've either got channel sampling or we got trenching that demonstrates the grade at surface that now says it's now a bona fide drill ready uh, target. So all of that was kind of the big things that came out of 2023 for Outcrop. Yeah, so the the resource update was like the big milestone for 2023, putting out that maiden you know, resource was the big anticipation. Um, I remember I talked about it back in February and March. I believe it came out in April. And some people were disappointed because uh, they were looking for 50 million ounces in total. Uh, but you made some good points there that this was important to get this first, you know, first resource completed and out there so you could talk about it and put it in context that it's just over a very small portion of the entire strike extent of the Santa Ana project area. So fast forward to Monday, you announced that you're planning to commence a drill program April 1 at Santa Ana. Tell me about this year's program. And I know you changed drill contractor. A lot of preparation went into the start of this program and getting access to these new areas. So if you just run through it for us, please. 
So um, I'm going to start with the beginning as what was going on and explaining where the, the company was. Um, and so, yeah, I think a lot of people had an expectation of a bigger resource. And the truth is uh, the resource is only on seven of the, of the drilled veins. And there's more veins that have been drilled, um, but they just didn't have the density to get it into the resource estimate. But I think that that there was a lot of anticipation and there was, we can't delay this any longer. We just have to put it out. And yes, uh, there might've been some disappointment, but it's not because the resources aren't there. Um, so that's a big, a big part of my job. And as you know, uh, I came in in July of last year uh, to take the, the helm of the company. Uh, I'm a mining engineer by background, but my background too is not discovery. It's about uh, developing out a resource, getting it into project development and advancing and de-risking a project. So um, Joe did an amazing job making the discovery, uh, putting the science behind it on how we convert these individual veins into um, resource. And so now it's about executing upon that plan. Um, but one of the problems we had at the end of the year last year, so we we were drilling um, but the performance uh, was really poor. And it was a, you know, productivity is a part of both, um, you know, you want to get more drilled, but you're also carrying a lot of costs associated with that. And then there was an accuracy problem. And when you're trying to hit um, not just a vein, but an ore shoot within a vein, uh, accuracy is highly important. And we just weren't hitting the targets the way we wanted to be uh, hitting them. And so we made a tough decision. And that was, we need to go back to our old contractor who uh, performed better um, and had, a, you know, just overall performed better. Uh, we knew it was going to be difficult. The end of the last year was kind of a difficult time for us, um, but we made the decision and we said, we're going to take advantage of this decision by accessing the areas that we truly want to access, which means putting the land agreements in place, understanding logistics, know where we're going to drill the pads, doing all that work and taking advantage of this switch between contractors to drill what we really want to drill. Right. And we can get back it. We can go into a deeper dive into that and it's easier around uh, a map and I'll pull it can pull that up. But that was critically important. Right. Um, because I want to clearly demonstrate to market how they can see a pathway to get over hundred million ounces on this project. And we want to be able to demonstrate that with this year's program. Okay. Yeah. Let's, Let's take a look at the map. You put out news on Monday. There's a map in there that shows the project area, the red, you know, resource veins at the northern end of the project, and then the prospective veins in orange. And the orange areas far exceed the red areas. So there's a lot of potential at Santa Ana. And uh, particularly uh, as you step out down to the south, there's some very, very attractive targets down there. So let's go through that. Yeah, I hope you can see the map. I tried to pull it up. Is it on your screen? Yep. Okay. So let me give you a little bit of the background. As you were explaining, the red lines actually are um, the, the, the veins that were in uh, the resource. Um, and so you can see they're all really all clustered up in this northeastern section um, of the map. And it's not even all of them, right? Um, and that is where our 37 million ounces are from. Um, and so our drilling is really focused on, on three things. The first is we see some really low high hanging fruit. We see the Alaska vein, which just didn't have enough drill density to be able to convert it to resource, to get a little bit more drill into that, to convert it to a resource. On Naranjos, which was an important component, a long strike, it is still open to continue to push it open a long strike. On El Dorado, we have both. We had a little hole at depth, right? So this isn't a deep hole, but this is a, a hole at depth within that resource that we see and it's along the ore chute so we think that's a great opportunity to add significant ounces and then also open uh, a long strike and so those are areas where we know that if we get those it's going to add ounces to our resource and that's going to give us time as we're building the logistics uh, mostly to get the water lines and get the pads built um, in our area which is called Aguilar 
And the, the big, I like this for two, multiple reasons, right? The big reason is, you know, that if we can pull this uh, vein set into resource, you can start seeing how this entire 18 kilometer corridor can start building out from 37 million ounces to a much larger size because you're really stepping out halfway to it's a 1.8 kilometer uh, strike length and our channel sampling um, I think was showing up to five kilograms of silver per ton so nice grade uh, so it's what we like to see uh, but we have a nice uh, uh, and as you can we're going to be testing the uh, long sections of it so it's not enough to convert it to a resource, but I think it can paint it really, really well where people can see how this resource is going to grow. Okay. But then we want to jump all the way down to the South, um, uh, the, the South, uh, so Southern corner of the overall uh, corridor. Um, first I want to explain is the blues are our titles, um, green are applications. So green are, are we're working to convert those to titles, but we control that ground uh, and that ground has been locked up uh, for us. Um, but this Mangos area here at the very southern, as we want to get down by the end of the year, was showing up to nine kilos per ton silver. Some of the highest grade hits uh, we have back from our uh, prospecting work uh, is on these Mangos. And neither Aguilar nor Mangos have ever been drilled. Um, so I think that that's the big goal. Get the drilling into these areas, and these areas, and then you can clearly see that you're starting to create a pathway to get to some significant growth in overall ounces. Because um, I'm big on that. It's, it's, it's one thing to try and explain it and, oh, you have these many targets and blah, blah, blah. When you can visually see how you have 37 million ounces and as you grow down this corridor, there's an easy way for this thing to be getting much, much, much bigger in size and scale. And so those are the overall, those are the clear objectives and the number one objectives and strategy for the company in 2023, uh, 2024, and specifically um, the drilling exploration objectives. And we have some others. Yeah, that area uh, to the south that when we were looking at the maps in your VP of exploration was was you know describing uh the area and the history of the area going back to the spanish colonization the spanish empire uh th this is the area that he was really excited about uh the potential there and then obviously as you said uh, some of the uh, sampling some of the rock samples the soils that you have down there by los mangos are just off the charts in terms of the grades and the fact that they've never seen a drill. Um, pretty high priority, I would say. Yeah, you can sit here. Here's our Los Mangos. And uh, it was up to nine kilos per ton. Um, uh, so that's really screamer grades. And this free S mine, this area in colonial times pr produced a large percentage of the new silver uh, that the Spanish mined in colonial times. The rest was melted stuff. A lot of it came from just melting stuff down, but this was, uh, you know, since colonial times. And you can see here along uh, this Aguilar uh, piece, you know, up to up to five kilos per ton type work and the Spiritu Santo, which is nearby, is about five kilos per ton. So they're really working up to be very nice uh, targets. Um, and the other thing is we're still developing targets all the time. So we're still developing new targets as we move along. Um, and so it's one thing I want to also be clearer on is we have lots of targets and we work diligently to convert those into drill ready targets. Uh, and we're continually create more and more inventory as we map, uh, and sample, uh, on this project. Okay. Um, Ian, this is a great conversation. Can you, uh, can you just leave us with uh, sort of a timeline, a rough timeline of what we can expect over the coming uh, months and also the, the company's uh, current cash holdings and what the budget for this year's program is right now? Yeah, so... Um, the We just finished a, a financing. So we're well well positioned um, um, for uh, the year uh, to be able to get this drilling done. 
We are currently mobilizing to site. And so within a little over a week, drilling will start. Um, the, we're expecting a productivity about 900 uh, meters per month. That might be a little slower in the first month. Um, but we're not looking, our average hole length, I believe is about 250 meters and maybe even shorter because we're not, the one other thing I told you, we're not go, we're not chasing di ounces at depth. You know, all this stuff is open at depth, but, um, we, we are about value creation and, uh, but on that basis, you know, we could start seeing the initial results, um, by the end of April. Uh, so I'm not saying we're putting out a news release at the end of April, um, but it's possible. Um, because, you know, we can get a two day turnaround in Colombia, right. Uh, on, on, on assay results on fire assays. So it's a, we don't suffer what a lot of people suffer in Canada. So we can get results fairly quickly. Um, and so we, ex but we do expect to be creating uh, a nice news flow, um, um, throughout the year. Um, and our drill program is, to continue drilling. What, what I showed on the map is basically, isn't even a full year's worth of drilling. Um, and, but we expect that once the drilling starts, it will not stop. Our goal here is to continue uh, to drill because I truly believe, even if market doesn't change, and I don't think it, I think it is gonna change, right? Uh, especially for silver. Um, but we can still create significant value right now, being able to just demonstrate this pathway. I'm, I'm, I'm very confident about that. Being able to visually see how this resource is going to grow significantly um, can create a significant value for our shareholders. So we're financed to do that entire work. Um, um, and we, so we're in a very good position right now. We're very excited, right? That we're going to be able to finally drill what we really want to drill. We're going to be drilling into stuff that's never been drill tested um, and have a solid strategy uh, behind us. Do you start at the north end of the pro project and work your way south, or do you start at the south and, and go north? No, logistically, uh, we're going to start at the north um, because we now the only step we have to do now, now that we've made the decision, is we need to put in some additional water line uh, to get down to the middle. So we'll be taking stepping stone, taking steps as we move south. The old strategy was to slowly move south, and I'm like, we can't do that anymore. It, it, we need to be able to demonstrate the this overall corridor potential. And so we really want, uh, and it took a, an amazing amount of work, wonderful work um, on the backs of some, you know, demonstrable uh, success working together with our communities uh, locally, uh, helped to build that um, rapport and reputation that helped um, make sure that we could get access to these additional areas. Um, and all the way down to free us, which is which is really kind of going around the other side of the hill. So it's it's quite separate from Fallen down in free us. It's uh, it's kind of a different a different area, but our reputation has carried us down to the to the south, which is nice. Yeah, I think that's a very important point to, that you made there at the end. I think it's a good place to leave the conversation until next time. That uh, when I visited Santa Ana. It really made me proud to be in the mining industry, that the work that you're doing there uh, in the town, in the local area, um, you're making a difference in a lot of people's lives. Uh, and so that and that matters. So it's it's a it's a classic win-win uh, where you know you can have good you know results and find some really high grade silver, hopefully, and you can also do good or people that live in the area. Ian, thanks a lot for your time. And I look forward to getting an update for from you, maybe, as you said, late April or May. Wonderful.